better than the the Alabama shirt you wear. That shirt. I agree. I agree. Because Alabama, right. Alabama, Alabama. Um, yeah, I agree. Uh, all right, we got Mr. Dalco in the house. But everyone, we are live. Everyone, we are live again. Dynasty Mirror Search for Guru. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, before we get started, as we always do, we just want to thank you all for the support. It really means a lot. Uh, also, too, to our Care Bars partners who are watching. Again, thank you for being part of our Care Bars team. Uh, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. Again, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And also, go to DynastyMirror.com. Again, go to DynastyMirror.com. Let me get that banner going at the bottom. Uh, one second. Bam. There we go. Make sure you go to DynastyMirror.com. And guys, don't 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 forget now. Don't forget the book. Get off your butt and cold call. I don't want to uh, offend um, YouTube, so we're gonna say butt. Okay. Yeah, right there, right there. Yeah, 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 right, guys. Don't you know? Make yeah, sure you get right grab your copy. You know, grab All your right. copy, guys. All grab right. Your copy. So, uh, and also right there, make sure you join the email list. And then Patreon, patreon.com, search for Uhuru, um, become a monthly Patreon, you guys. So without further ado, we have a special, special guest. You know, we have our special guest, Fitzgerald, and then we got a, another special guest. So we got special guests today, um, Mr. Fitzgerald Stevens and Mr. Michael Dalco, everybody. And today's topic is how much longer until the economy gets back to normal? Um if there is even such thing as normal, will there ever be a normal? I know we talked talked about this before, but you know, just looking at the statistics, let's see here. Uh, Forty percent of the jobs or positions that were lost during coronavirus, we're still doing, we're still in coronavirus. Uh, those aren't coming back. Uh, let's see here. What else is there? I mean, the term "work for home" business or entrepreneur was like one of the most after uh, this, well, during this coronavirus pandemic, it was like one of the most Google search terms. So a lot of people, are, I mean, words searched on Google, one of the most, um, you know, as far as uh, entrepreneur, you know, work from home, that term, that word, uh, the spike, it went up as far as uh, search results in Google uh, during coronavirus. Uh, what else here? You know, my son Mansa, he's doing school from home, so he's not in a physical school. Who would ever thought? Let's see here. Two, there's college football has been disrupted. Like two of the major conferences in the Power Five are not playing this year, and you never know. There might not even be a season, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, so we don't. I mean, this thing completely changed. I just uh, it, it affected just this whole globe, and no. But if you would have thought. If I would have told Fitzgerald and Mr. Dalco this time last year that, hey, we're not going to be able to fly, passport office is going to be closed, uh, college football is in jeopardy, they're going to cancel NCAA March Madness, uh, they're going to be playing the NBA playoffs at a, a hotel, uh, <laughs> literally, <laughs> yeah, in a banquet hall, <laughs> NBA playoffs at a banquet hall at a hotel. <laughs> I mean, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then also, too, they're talking about, so when we talk about how much longer until it gets back normal, so I know in New York, they're saying come fall that they might shut the restaurants back down. You know, so a lot of people are going to be impacted. So, you know, we're here to offer a solution. Yes, there's doom and gloom, you know, but we're here at least to, to at, at the very least say, hey, we have a solution, you know, it's up to you, but it's, it's here, you know, it's working well for me, for Fitzgerald, definitely working well for Mr. Dalco. Um, so that's why we are here today. So without further ado, uh, Mr. Stevens, if you want to introduce yourself and then followed by Mr. Dalco, you can introduce yourself. Uh, yeah. Well. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Fitzgerald. Some of you know me, let me allow me to introduce myself. I'm an entrepreneur um, by way of here in Tampa, Florida, and I'm a gold and cryptocurrency entrepreneur by way of carrot bars. For those who heard me yesterday, I was talking, I have, uh, or in, in prior streams, I often talk about Michael Delco, Michael Delco. Remember January 14th, 2015, 7.30 p.m., 17 degrees, Buffalo, New York. Gentlemen, I've been doing, I have been doing since 1998. That's the Mr. Michael Delco I'm talking about. He was the one that started this for me. Um, you know, um, I, he, I, he said, I have a business, deals with gold, free to join us, so sign me up. Didn't know what I had to about a year later. 
Uh, this was the, the, the recap a little bit. What the, the recap a little bit what we talked about yesterday, and I, I I told a story about how I reached out to Mr. Delco, and I said, Michael, where where are we doing? Where am I missing it? What what can I do to be more effective for my team? And remember, I told you he reached out to our senior upline, uh, Mr. Ty Best. Uh, Mr. Best pointed out to me. Um, that I have forgot that I'm very analytical. I would just like the facts. So uh, uh, I figure if someone teaches me something, hey, I can go out to do it because I didn't want to bother, uh, you know, my 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 guy, Michael. I mean, you know, he. I'm, I'm thinking, well, with a man with like ninety some thousand affiliates around the world, surely I want to be low maintenance. That was wrong. So what I had, I had, um, I had said to you guys, I forgot about the main purpose of this business that Mr. Uh, Mr. Vest reminded me and Mr. Delco in a Walmart parking lot here in Tampa. So Fitzgerald, you have to talk about the dream. Why is it that you want to do this? I can tell you about the gold. I can tell you about the uh, the exchanges. I can tell you about a lot of things. But if you don't have a reason, if you don't have something you want. It really does no good. Meanwhile, you could tell me, uh, you could tell me, um, hey, Fitzgerald, this is the way you do it right here. This is a sequence. I say, you OK, got that. OK, cool. I'll talk to you when I get it. But but not everyone is wired like that. So so I'm going to I'm going to sit back and let you guys um, let, let you guys hear the man who started this for me. I started for Dynas and Dynas has started for darn near over 655 families around the world with you. And so I, I suggest you take your you get a pen and paper. It's just that important. Just that just really, really that important. And uh, without further ado, uh, my friend, my sponsor, Mr. Michael Delco. Thank you, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Diana. Uh, before we get started on this phenomenal conversation, this is a perfect, perfect pitch as it relates to the theme of this stream. I got to say, I want you guys to understand I'm a fan of Diana Stamir. I literally follow this gentleman. He is moving and shaking and helping people all over the world. And he brings up these rousing conversations that make us think. You know, it's not enough to just whine and complain. Uh, you gotta make people think. Make them think independent of what they're seeing on mainstream news. Make them think, it, even the conspiracy. Make them think through the conspiracy. Does the conspiracy hold water? When you punch a couple of holes in it, is it still legit? You know, and Dynas is always making people think. So, brother, thank you for that. Uh, I thank love you. this. How much longer until the U.S. economy is back to normal? So let me start this conversation from my side on making a proper premise. Okay, the most important economy is the one in your own home. Mm. Okay, the most important economy is the one in your own home. So are you relying on the government to set the bar for your economy? Are you, are you relying on Wall Street to set the bar for your economy? Or are you creating your own economy? So I have made as much money during the coronavirus as I did. I didn't make as much as I made last year, but I made as much this year during coronavirus as I did in 2018. And I had a great year in 2018. Coronavirus has not impacted my income at all. Mm. It may be, it may be keeps me, you know, protecting my brothers and sisters out there in the street where maybe I'm quarantining, quarantining myself, or maybe I'm wearing a mask and they can't see me smile when I'm out in the street. So maybe if I'm an asymptomatic carrier, I protect you. So I wear my mask, but it doesn't affect my economy. Maybe it keeps me from sitting at a beautiful restaurant with my wife and enjoying the ambiance of that restaurant, but it doesn't affect my economy. If anything, I'm getting a little richer during this pandemic because I can't spend as much. I don't even know if y'all want me on the stream today. <laughs> but literally, it's up to you guys. Your economy can get back to normal today. Mr. Dynastamir is putting a link in the chat room. It's not an answer to everything. But it's a big, fantastic start. It's a big, incredible start. So literally, the economy can get back to normal today if you choose. That's my short answer. 
Go, go ahead. We're, we're, we're here absorbing everything, Mr. Dalton. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't yeah, come yeah, to talk. Yeah, we're just, we're, we're, we're talking about it. We're yeah, not asking how to come to talk, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, like I said, like uh, somebody told me a long time ago, when in the presence of a master, just shut up. So we just, I'm just going to just, just go ahead. It's, for sure. it's weird for me to, to hear you guys say that because the mastery is still, I'm working on the mastery. But mm -hmm. I do know what I know, and I know what I don't know. Now I do know what I don't know. I mean, I get to talk to some really high-level financial people, and I'm amazed. I do like you, Dynast. I just sit there and go, okay, I'm missing that one. Mm -hmm. Let me give you guys a, a real simple one. Go ahead. You know, it's embarrassing that I'm 56 years old in September this year, and mm -hmm. I just learned this. This one hurt me. This girl, I, me and you haven't even talked about that, and we're great friends about this one. Use your credit card, your bank credit card, and pay all your bills on your bank credit card. Don't use cash and don't use debit cards when you go out. Use your credit card. I don't, I don't get that. What is that about? It says because you hold on to your cash for emergencies. You float that cash along for the month and you use your credit card all month. Two amazing things happen. One, it tracks three amazing things happen. One, it tracks all of your income and gives you a written record of every dollar spent. That's one. Two, it lets you see what you're spending so you can adjust your budget accordingly so you're not blowing cash, right? And number three, it increases the activity on your credit with your bank and your bank is your number one customer and they have the ability to continue to raise your credit limit because of your activity within your credit card. Paid the card off before it accrues interest, and now you're increasing your activity on your credit card, increasing your credibility with your bank, tracking your expenses, and keeping your cash each month in case you have a mid-month emergency. Guys, it happened almost like magic. Within the first two months of me doing that, they raised my credit limit by $20,000. <laughs> just, just a little small thing. You know, oh, they see... If I get my credit raised by $100. <laughs> <laughs> so look, even, even people that say, I got bad credit, I don't have a credit card, go to your bank, put $300 on deposit, get a secure credit card. Let them take that secure card. Well, wait, let me, let me back up a second. I am not a financial advisor. Mm -hmm. All right? So that's my disclaimer. I'm not giving financial advice. I'm just telling you something I did. Get your secure credit card, $300 balance. Use the card, put gas in your car with it and, and buy your, you know, whatever you need to buy, pay a bill with it or whatever. And then at the end of the month, pay it off before it accrues interest. Do it again next month. Two or three months down the road, you can call them, ask for a credit increase. They raise you to 500. You keep doing it. Credit increase, 1,000. Keep doing it. 2,000, 10,000, 30,000, 50,000. It becomes your expenditure card. Another thing about it, it's safe. You lose it, call the bank. Cut the card off. Most of those major banks have a 24-hour limit. Cut the card off, and they'll issue you another one. It's it's a safer way to travel. Don't have cash in your pocket. So it's a you know, that's just a little small example of the kind of conversations people have. And I'm around. They talk about buying gold mines. Like, how can you buy a gold mine? But it starts incrementally. So you control your own economy. Don't let anyone control your economy. Find yourself a home-based business. Dynast, in my opinion, has the best one. And Dynast and Fitzgerald, I can't tell you right now, but it's going to get even better. Within seven days, you're going to hear some amazing breakthroughs. Mm. So find yourself a home-based business. Learn how to accumulate assets. They make you richer. Anybody that was saving gold over the last five years have increased your wealth by about 40% without any effort. So let your money make money for you. Learn what real money is. If it's real money, it must be worth as much or more in the future as it is today. In other words, you say you go to work, you work 40 hours this week, you make $1,000, and you could take that check, get $1,000, go down to Brandsmart and buy a refrigerator for $1,000. That means that refrigerator represents your labor. Do y'all get that? Mm. Right? That refrigerator now, is, when you look at that refrigerator, it equals the 40 hours you work to pay for it. 
If you took that thousand dollars and put it in a wall safe for 10 years and 10 years later, you took it out of that safe and you went to that same brand smart, you should be able to buy that exact refrigerator or its equivalent for a thousand dollars. But you can't. It's because you're working for something called currency. It's not money. I know we call it money. I'm not going to argue those semantics, but we work for something called currency and currency reduces with something called inflation. Inflation is simply the printing of the currency. Uh, let me let me step back. Uh, okay, so Wendy says, Dinez, what exactly is your home-based business? So Dinez, post it again because Wendy needs to take a look at that. And Dinez, is that a capture page or is that also the presentation? No, this is actually just the uh, Carabars of affiliate link, my affiliate okay. link. All right, also type in the chat room, therealmoney.info. Oh, yeah. Generic presentation for Wendy there because she's interested. And thank you, Wendy, for your interest there. So, therealmoney.info will show you, Wendy, how the business is the basic blueprint of the business. And then Dynast and Fitzgerald will help you understand more. So, it's no hurry. It's free to join it, free to set it up, no monthly expenses, nothing is mandatory. Right? So, get that set up and then Dynast will get in touch with you. Once you sign up that link that he's going to give you, It'll send him a notification. He'll contact you and get you all set up. The business, we're doing business in 149 countries. I can talk to y'all for dinner right now. I'm so wound up, but let me see if I can dial this back a bit. Why is it important to be in business in 149 countries? For several obvious reasons. Dynas is from Nigeria? Uh, Sacramento, California, but I'm Nigerian. Nigerian, Sacramento, California, but he's Nigerian. Okay, so in Nigeria, what time is it right now, Diana? Uh, it should be eleven twenty-five. Eleven twenty-five. Okay, and when it's eleven twenty-five for us, it's morning for them. They wake up and start building his business while he's sleeping. People over in New Zealand, it's like tomorrow in New Zealand. They're already building my income while I'm here. In today, it's tomorrow for me in New Zealand. I'm duplicating myself around the world because every time you add a new affiliate to your team, you're creating another stream of income. People talk about multiple streams of income. You want to find a system that allows you to add additional streams of income whenever you want to. Every time you add a new affiliate to your business, you've added another stream of income. So Dynast Amir is sponsored five, six, seven hundred people. That is potentially five, six, seven hundred streams of income. So now over the coming weeks, we're going to be working with him to have some one-on-one -on -one and two-on-one -on -one meetings with those individuals and really teach them what I've learned over the last six years and get them independently wealthy. So it creates something called time freedom, where you're not trading your 40 hours for that thousand dollars that $1,000 is showing up whether you trade your time or not, right? Because what's going to happen is if you're working for currency, you're working for something that's losing value over time. You're getting older. Your currency is getting weaker and prices are going higher. So how do you reverse that? That's the business that Dynast is going to share with you, how to reverse that. You take the currency that's losing value, exchange it for an appreciating asset that's gaining value. So as you age, your wealth goes up. Instead of as you age, your wealth goes down. As you age, your wealth goes up. It's giving that diametric opposition so that you can leave something for your children's children. Right? So you want time freedom. You want in you want income that's independent of your physical labor and time. You don't want to exchange time for wealth. You want a system that builds wealth. Let me, I'm, I got to go somewhere with this, but let me, let me uh, uh, embellish that just a little bit. McDonald's, the story of McDonald's, the, the, the founder, Ray Kroc went to the McDonald's brothers. They had this awesome restaurant with some great hamburgers. It was, great a, movie. it was, say it again, Donnie. Founder, great movie. Ray, right. right. It, the, McDonald's was in one spot in this little town. And it was always a line of people. And Ray Kroc drove by and was like, why are all those people there? And they had shakes and fries and burgers. And it was like they were cooking it nice. It wasn't the McDonald's we know today. But, but I'll still illustrate the point. They were making a lot of money in that location. 
So Ray Kroc, first he went in, he said, guys, this is great, but I'm gonna show you a couple of things. He drew it out on the floor and he said, he started showing them how they could move faster, make systematize the, the, the burgers. And so they did that and they started making twice as much money with the system. He said, oh boy, we're onto something. He said, let's open another one three blocks away. They were like, why would you do that? What, they could just come here. He said, no, it's convenience. They'll go there and here. It'll speed up the processing time and you'll make more money. They tried it, boom, it quadrupled their income. Okay, what did he find out? Instead of having one stream of income, he had two streams of income. And he said, wow, let's put one over in the next city. And he said, guys, how about we just make this the model and we sell this model and call it franchising. And now there are billions of McDonald's around the world, millions, multiple millions. I was in Madrid, Spain. We stayed at this beautiful boutique, boutique hotel. I uh, mean, even the Uber from the airport was a Tesla. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, this luxury S Tesla, S type. And they drive us in and trunk in the back and frunk in the front, right? And they take our luggage out and we get out at the boutique hotel and we got this fabulous room and it's overlooking uh, the courtyard and all these shops. And it was winter time, a little rain and snow. And Mike, I see it, Mike, Mike, I see it, Mike, I see it, Mike, I see it. I see it. I'm there, I'm there, I'm at the boutique hotel, I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. There's a lot of people, man. And they're not like here in America when it rains and it's cold in America, we stay in the house. Not in Madrid. More people come out in the rain and they put blankets over themselves. They sit in the street. They play guitars. They have little, uh, uh, the lanterns, the heat lanterns outside at the restaurant. Man, they'll put up an umbrella and eat their food while it's raining. It is an amazing culture. It's a whole nother, man, you got to trap, man. That's why Dinah, that's why I follow you is because you're well-traveled. Guys, you can't live in this bubble. I was reading the chat room and a couple of people were having a, a nice conversation they were talking about. I think one of them said, we're moving close to socialism. And another one said, I'm from the UK. We're not even close to socialism. It's because people who travel, they really get to understand these terms that we argue about here in the United States. They don't argue about this stuff over there. Like Germany, Americans would call Germany socialist, but they have billionaires over there just like we do here. They just, they just put more, they're taxed higher and they put more money into taking care of the less, less, uh, viable citizenry, people who really can't take care of themselves, they don't kind of treat them like we do here. They say, well, hey, I made it, you make it. No, they, nobody sleeps on the street in Germany, right? You have a heart attack in Germany, They, the government gives you six weeks at a, at a rehab center and take care of your health care. So that, so here's why, here's, here's what they get. And it's a political debate, we can talk about that some other day, but that person, who was working goes and sits at that rehab center. The government pays for their health care so they don't have to stress about it and become bankrupt and homeless and make the city bad. And then when they're sick, they go to emergency like they do here in America. They go to the emergency room, which makes our health care higher and the private health insurance insurers here overcharge because they know we need the health care. That doesn't happen there. Health care is low. It's basically a public option. And there are people, when they have a heart attack, they go to the rehab center, government pays for their health care, and then they come back to work healthy and they're more productive. In Japan, when they go to work, they give a whole couple of hours where they just go sit in a meditation room and think of good ideas. And then they come out and work the rest of the day and they come out with ideas and they give those ideas to that corporation and that corporation is able to flourish. That's why we're so far behind in a lot of areas. It's because these different models, we can we we throw off on them and call them names because maybe it doesn't work here, but it works there. The German citizens are very happy with their government. They love they love Angela Merkel. Okay, Shinzo Abe, he's he's celebrated in in Japan. Hey, the guy that was in, I'm gonna step on, I'm gonna kick over some sacred cows right now. But more Mark Gaddafi in Libya, the people love him. America didn't love him. But the people love them. <laughs> you you got to travel a little bit. When I was over there in Spain, I was looking. I was like, why is everybody happy? And the people were happy. They were dancing in the street, literally. It wasn't a holiday. They were literally dancing in the street. There was music playing. Guys, I don't condone it. But there were prostitutes standing on the street corner 
well dressed, and people were having conversations and giving them cigarettes. Like I don't condone that, <laughs> but but like you gotta travel, like you gotta see some other cultures so you don't get in our little bubble here in the United States and think we're the greatest country in the world. All these countries have got their, their stuff together. They're doing their thing. You don't see massive uprising in every country in the world. The people are not crazy. There is some there's some challenges in some countries where the people have no voice and no vote. But there's some serious countries over there, you know, Spain and France and England and Germany. They're knocking it, they're knocking it out of the park. Right? So anyway. We're sitting over there and the people are dancing and singing. I see McDonald's. I didn't forget where I was going with this. I see McDonald's. And guys, I walked up across the street because it was late. It was like two, three in the morning. The only thing open was McDonald's and the people were just walking in the street. And so I, if you're ready to go in and order like I order here, and man, they got kiosks. We're so far behind. They have a kiosk and you touch the buttons and it tells you, and you, and you push pay and they got Apple Pay. PayPal, they got a bunch of other ones. Uh, I can't think of the name as well. The, the uh, European uh, diff the similarity to PayPal and Apple Pay, they got all those, and you just take your phone and pay. And then they, you got a number, and your number pops up on the board, they slide your food, and you go. Like, so efficient, right? And McDonald's took that system, and they made it where, they made it where, uh, they, McDonald's is getting paid. McDonald's Corporation may be in America, but they got streams of income in Madrid, Spain. They had a McDonald's in Cape Town when I was there. They had a McDonald's in doggone Abu Dhabi. Like, they're everywhere. They have a system of building wealth. So if one of the McDonald's goes out of business, if Madrid, Spain, McDonald's went out of business, they don't care. They got 10 million more McDonald's. So like Dynast Amir, if one of his team members in Karen Bars quits, I mean, he cares because he wants to see them successful. But if one of them quits, he's still got 600 other streams of income. All he's got to do is develop them and build them. So it gives you location freedom. All right, time freedom. That means you're not trading time for dollars. And then location freedom. All right, that means... You have portable income. Like literally, I wouldn't do it yet. I'm looking. I've been watching Dynast streams and I've been thinking about Ghana. I've been thinking about it. I was looking at some real estate in Ghana. And Nigeria. Looking, uh, Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria too, but I'm saying I've been watching you okay, and okay, okay, my okay. Eyes on Africa. I've been looking at some real estate in in Ghana, in Accra, Ghana. I got some friends over there with gold mines. Oh. All right? I'm looking at Nigeria. We 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 get told stuff over here like it's dangerous over there in Africa. Ghana is one of the safest countries over there. Like it's not dangerous. It's more dangerous for me, right? Let me let me dial this thing back, right? <laughs> oh my God, man. It's more dangerous for me here in Georgia. Hello? Do I need to embellish that? Do I need to elaborate on that? No. It's, it's dangerous for me here in Georgia, United States, than it would be for me to go where I'm celebrated. Hello? All right. Am I talking to somebody? Right? So location freedom. That means your income is not tied to you living somewhere where you got to commute, but you got to live close to where you work. You have location freedom. All right? And then you have financial freedom where you're not in debt to anybody. So you got time freedom, location freedom, financial freedom. That's real freedom where you have nowhere to go, no one, nowhere you have to be, no one you have to answer to, and nothing you have to do, and you still get paid. Mm. Right? Nowhere you have to go, no one who you have to answer to, and nothing, no task that you have to do, and you still get paid. That's what Mr. Mir is going to show you guys with with that with the realmoney.info and his link. Get your free account set up. All three of us are here to help you build your business. Mm -hmm. All right. 
All right, all right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bear, this is this is all you, man. You know, I guess. Yeah, yeah I would have to follow up. Yeah, uh, me. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, oh, you know, like this. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, then, Mr. Yeah. I was in that, like the the way the, how so you were so vivid. Right, I was in the Tesla with you. I, I went to the McDonald's kiosk with you. I, I felt the raindrops. You know, I saw the hooker smoking the, the, the cigarettes and talking. Like I, I, I was, I was in Madrid, Spain with. Like I don't even need to go. I went. I was there with you. Let me yeah. tell you, when we when we sat down in the Tesla, and this and guys, this was right before the pandemic. This was like November of last year when we were in Spain. When we got in the Tesla and we started to turn and come out of the airport, there were some people walking. To their to the parking lot, and the Tesla was right behind them, and you can't hear that car at all. It, nothing, it's zero emissions. You know, like here in America, we argue about climate change. In Madrid, they argue about pollution. Like it's the same. Do, you, do you understand? It's the same thing. Like climate change and pollution, it's the same thing in theory because whether you believe in climate change or not, it's pollution that causes it. And you can't deny pollution. You go to LA and it's cleaner right now than it was last year because there are fewer cars. Right. It's emissions. Okay, look, we, we don't need to have stupid arguments. Like it's a stupid argument to have climate change. Let's argue about pollution. And if you don't believe in pollution, why does your car have to have an emissions test? It emits something. <laughs> Electric cars are zero emissions. See, I don't have the, I don't have a political argument. I have the logical one. An electric car is zero emissions. I will not buy another gas-powered vehicle. Not because I'm a tree hugger, but because of efficiency. The electric car is renewable energy. We don't have to have wars over oil anymore because now the vehicles will run on electricity. And whether you like the world moving to electric vehicles or not. It's going to move and keep on living a while, and we're going to be flying in hover cars like the Jetsons because mm. Elon Musk already... Look, guys, Elon Musk flies rockets to outer space. He also creates electric cars that drive at rocket speed on land. You don't think they, they, all they need is a 400 kilowatt battery to make a car levitate. That's all they need. It, it's already in testing. So... Your jobs are going to change. Back to our topic for today, your jobs are going to change. If you're depending on that job you love to be your substance in this new economy, you may as well write Dinesh and Fitzgerald a note and have prayer, have them pray for you. It's, you're not going to have the same job. You're not, it's not no one taking your job. All right? No one's taking your job. Your job is leaving because of something called technology. Those of you that work for gas stations, you're going to be out of business. Those of you that are gas uh, power, gas, gas vehicle mechanics, you're going to be out of business. It's not, no one's mad at you. No one's trying to ruin your life. You better go learn how to work on electric cars because the world's changing. Tesla is the number one earning car dealer in the world, manufacturer in the world. They sell the fewest cars and got the most revenue. Why? Because it's a more efficient. In the factory, mostly it's computers making the cars. Guys, we, we did a test drive of a Tesla. This is, I had just bought my Range Rover, right? And I love, that Range Rover was on my dream board. So me and my wife went and bought the Range Rover. And we came home and we were all excited. We happy, we happy. And we riding around and we're in the mall. Now, this is, this is another visualization. We're walking through the mall. And there's a storefront for a car company in the mall. There's a car company, a store, a car store in the mall. Like, how do you have a car store in the mall? And there's two cars sitting on a floor in the store, in the mall. Like, what? Clothes, shoes, belts, cars in the mall. So we walk in, it's a Tesla store. And there's a, 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 number, a three, a Tesla three, Model three, and a Tesla Model S. And we get in the car, and it's amazing. And so the guy goes, hey, let's test drive it. Okay, okay. So we go outside, get in the Model S, and I'm driving, and he's in that side, my wife's in the back. And we drive around, and it's just quiet, and it's just smooth, minimalist. And we get to the uh, to the on-ramp, to the highway. And he said, turn right here on the on-ramp. And I turn, and he said, okay, 
as soon as I turned, he said, step on it, mash it to the floor. And I said, what? He said, mash it to the floor. There was no one in front of me. He said, he said, mash to the floor. And guys, I mashed it. I tried to go to the floor. If this is the floorboard, the gas pedal did like that. I was at 60 miles an hour. I kept trying to mash it and my head went, boom. My wife's head went, boom. It was like somebody <laughs> shot us out of a rocket. It was just, boom. And I said, whoa. And I yanked my foot off the gas and it broke. And he said, no, don't take your foot off the gas. And I put it back. Anyway, I was going, whoa. And it was like, what is this? He said, it's automatic braking. He said, that keeps you from ever having to have a brake job. I said, come on. Like, what are you talking about? He said, yeah, you almost never need to brake in a Tesla. He said, as you take your foot off, the electric engine reduces the tor torque in the, in the wheels, and it slows the car down without the braking mechanism. I said, man, I got to get out more. Like, I was raised super poor. Like, I, didn't, I wasn't exposed to anything. I was, Y'all, you need to go test drive a Tesla, even if you don't want one, just to move your mind to where the world is going. And man, we got on the highway. He said, get about 60, 65 miles an hour. I got there. He said, double click that little button where it's like a signal button. He said, pull it back to you twice. So I pulled it back. And he said, now take your foot off the gas. I took my foot off the gas. It was a nice 63 miles an hour. He said, okay, now go ahead and take your hand off the steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I said, huh? He said, go ahead and take your, take your hand off the steering wheel. You're in self-driving mode. I said, oh, no, I'm not in self-driving mode. He said, yes, you are. You're fine. Trust me. I do this all day, every day. I said, Jane, all right. I put my hand off the steering wheel. And that thing started taking the curves at 65 miles an hour. A car in front of me slowed down. It slowed down with the car. Car speeded up and speeded up. It's just it was autonomous driving. And he said, keep your hand near the wheel, not for the car, for you. He said, so you won't freak out. So I'm just, I got my head right below the wheel. But it was driving the heck out of the car. And he said, put on your left turn signal. We're on the highway at 63 miles an hour, Fitzgerald. I put on my left turn signal and I saw in the panel, it started, little boxes started lighting up on the car that were behind me, beside me, and in front of me. And it merged over into the next lane. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 the the the, uh, the group knows that Fitzgerald loves coffee colors, Audi A8, racing editions. You making this Audi thing talk, man. You making this thing sound like my, oh, man, my 1995 Toyota camera I used to have. But I love Audi yeah, I'm, 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 I lost, okay, repeat that part again. Repeat that part again. So he, he, he did the little quick thing, and then what happened? The quick yeah, thing. It's on, it's, on a, it's on full autonomous driving right there. And I put it on left turn, like left signal. I wanted to get over to the left or right. You just put on the signal. There will come a day when you'll say, uh, merge left. There will come a day where when you sit at 63 miles an hour, if the traffic in front of you is too slow, it's going to check around, around you and it's going to change lanes for you. The, the prototypes are already in place. It's already there. So Uber drivers, hey, enjoy it while you can. Because self-driving Uber is already happening. It's, uh, don't if, if you're if you're if you're anticipating that you love your job, you need to get on some more of Dinah Samir's podcast because your job's leaving. You're gonna need a system that makes money for you without your effort. Uh, automatic uh, what AI? Was it uh, artificial? artificial intelligence? Guys, in the Tesla, you look at the dashboard, Fitzgerald, and you like you play a video game, a driving game. That's what you're looking at in the dashboard. You can see the cars coming up behind you. If it's a bus up in front of you, it's a little bus, a little bus figurine on the dashboard. Everything. I mean, it'll tell you. It says it says you need you need to recharge in 187 miles. There's a recharging station 53 miles ahead on exit 42. It's like everything. That Tesla is, and then there's a new car manufacturer coming called the Lucid, and it's just as fire. I mean, the whole world is going to change. If you, whatever you're doing to make money, doctors, hey, artificial intelligence is going to be doing a lot of those heart surgeries. They already think about it. Lawyers are losing revenue. Like crazy, they bleed in revenue. Why? Because you can go online and get an a, a e lawyer 
And the dude sitting over there in Bangladesh, just as smart as the lawyer here, he got a degree and the cost of living is lower. And he, he'll do your documents. He'll do your living will for you for $87, where this lawyer here is trying to charge you $2,000. they will set up your trust. For 150 bucks. Man, the world is you keep keep on keep on saying I love my job. Keep it up. It'll be fine. You love your job, but they don't love you. They're looking for ways right now to reduce their bottom line. And artificial intelligence and technology is changing the world. Hmm. Changing the world. Yeah, for sure. I might go get me a Tesla. Yeah, man, I'm right Honest, I can totally see your big old muscular self in a Tesla, man. I bet you be leaning. You look perfect in a Tesla, bro. My wife, my wife is in love with that car. Like we still, and I and I promise you this, I won't buy another gas car. Like literally, when I finish building my dream room, it's gonna have electric charging stations in every bay in the garage. I won't buy another uh, gas powered car. What for? They, they're building batteries right now that's going to do a thousand miles on a single charge. What do you need a gas car for? And it'll recharge 40% in 15 minutes. You stop at a charging station, watch don't you see all of these restaurants, just like Cheesecake Factory in Cumberland, with charging stations right out front. Why not? Why? Because you stop at the restaurant and charge your car. And Tesla will let you turbocharge for free. They got 14 some hundred charging stations already. The world is changing. It's just flat out changing right beneath our feet. So we've got to change with it. The world is different. People that used to, oh man, y'all have to shut me up in a second. No, we're not shutting you up. No, keep going. No, no. We're, we're, not, uh, we're not setting you up. Mr. Delco, why do you think people resist jobs so much? I mean, the uh, technology is also, um, is also, um, it contributing to the to the expansion of the new economy, which I firmly believe is on the internet now. You know, I mean, with with, uh, with the way that digital currency is moving and gold is moving, cryptocurrency is moving, PayPal is all the apparatuses. But why do you think people are just so dogmatic, like holding on, like the whale oil and the fossil fuels and and you know, and the new the 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 cash and the going to work uh, forty hours and hope I can get ten hours overtime and and, you know, and staying in like uh, uh, 20 years, 30 years on a job and hope they take care of me with a nice Timex. And why do you think people are so skeptical to, to embrace that there's a new economy right now, not necessarily coming in the future, that will replace you if you don't adapt to it? You and I both have birthdays in uh, September. Uh, uh, we're both going to be, we're both going to be, uh, you know, uh, past middle 50s, man. And, and, but, even I could see that I never stuck to the old school diagram because you know what? Every time, every time I did that, I got left behind. I used to be, I used to be pretty decent with a typewriter, you know, type like this, pull it like that. Yeah. And then the computer came out, and then the, the not the computer, the pager came out. You can spell shell all if you look at it, you type in all sevens. <laughs> then, uh, then, uh, walk around with a fistful of quarters, you know, in case of course, pay phones are all over the place. Uh, we had the cell phones, they were like a brick, you know, you carry them now. Uh, then we came to computer right here. This is more powerful than my desktop. I'm watching you guys on it. It is considered old, you know. And so, why do you think now? When why why do people see all this, this this these changes? But they're reluctant to change with the change in order to build wealth for them and their family. Why do they think easy, that? Easy answer. You know what's easy the deal? Answer. My answer. I have an easy answer. There may be. I'm sure there are other answers, but I have a simple answer because I encounter this all the time. It's programming. It's programming. And why do they stick to hold on to fossil fuels when there's a better way? When you drive, when you drive a Tesla versus my Range Rover, I would much rather be in the Tesla. It's just the efficiency is so much greater. So why why do people buy a Range Rover? Why? Because if you look at TV, you see a commercial. Right. But you want that vehicle, right? It's a gas powered vehicle. They're all connected. That's a huge pet uh, 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 oil lobby. It's a huge oil lobby. Man, I, I try to avoid some of this conversation because it always leads back to things we argue about. And I don't want to argue, but there's a massive oil lobby that pays for our politicians' campaigns. 
if you think about that on its face, is bribery. Corporations and large donors should not be able to pay into political campaigns. It should be small donations from private citizens only because we can't get a truly representative government if a major company with a hundred billion dollars can give one billion to a politician to cause them to give policies that are in their best interest. It's not in mine. So we can't get policies that we want because the big money interests are getting the policies they want. Well, what do they want? They want to drill for more oil. Why? Because they get paid. They're, they're invested in oil wells. <laughs> so they don't want to stop the fossil fuel industry. Our entire schooling system and college system and work system is all pushing us towards the industries that cater to the wealthy class. We're doing what they want us to do because we've been trained since kids during our impressionable years of age three through seven, our parents give us to an outside influence to raise us. I saw somebody say in the chat room and I loved it. They said, no way are they letting their two year old get indoctrinated with this current system. They're gonna put their own personality and influence into their children. If you can homeschool your kids, God bless you because they need their own learning. They don't need to be jammed into a mold of learning what the rest of the world learns. How dare a system tell me and Fitzgerald that we have the same skill sets and mindsets and teach us out of one book and say that he's smarter than me or vice versa based on grades that he makes on a standardized test that are culturally biased in the first place. No, we all have our God-given innate abilities. So we should be able to learn on our own pace and go for what we want to do for our lives. So the days of going to school and going to college and being indoctrinated to sit in a cubicle, those days are leaving. But that's why, Fitzgerald, people won't quickly move and adapt to a better way. They just won't. They've got 40,000 hours of education that has brainwashed them into believing that this is the way it has to be done. I have a, that's too much information. I won't give that. But I want to go to something somebody said in the chat room. Um, Jill says, this sounds good, but I'm a skeptic. Typically, people do not beg for people to hop on to get paid. I'm getting, uh, if getting paid is that abundant and that easy, and that's true. And so let me make sure that I'm not giving the impression that we're selling anyone. So I was talking to our team on one of our daily calls, Jill, and I, the way I'm talking right now, this is the real me. Fitzgerald's been knowing me for 30 years. He knows this. I get super excited, and I flail my arms around, and I'm demonstrative, and I'm verbose. But really, if I was talking the way I really feel, I would be standing up and I'd be pacing and yelling and screaming at you guys because I'm that excited about what I've learned. But I know that my personality type kind of makes people think I'm trying to sell you, and I'm not. This business and this business model is so extraordinary. It just excites me where I feel like I'm pushing hard for you to learn this. But that is not my intent. So I apologize for seeming like I'm selling something. Okay. I'm not selling you anything, Jill. The way this business works, if you're not already involved, Diane has put a link in the chat room. It's free to join. So that we don't have anything to sell you. Carrot Bars is the first business I've ever seen where nobody makes money for selling stuff. We make money for saving something. It's a five gram bar of gold. We get paid for saving gold for ourselves and referring others to do the same, and they pay us a commission for the referral. Just like if you were a car salesman, you got paid for selling a car. I get paid for saving gold and teaching Dinas and Fitzgerald to save for themselves. If they don't save, I don't get paid. If they do save, I get a commission. It's that simple. So, yes, I, I get it that it sounds like a small pitch, but we're really not here for that. We're here to teach you guys. And if you don't do carrot bars, do something. For God's sake, do something besides punch a clock. Because when you punch a clock to, to start getting paid and clock out to stop getting paid, you are a financial catastrophe waiting to happen. You need a system where you get paid whether you're physically doing something or not. That's it. And somebody says, I look like a dark-skinned Jew. Funny story. Uh, my maternal family's name is Cohen. <laughs> oh, okay. 
<laughs> yeah, that's because you are. But but I think I think my real roots are Ethiopian. Uh, everybody tells me that I look like Ethiopian here. So we we don't know. I need to find out. You know, we uh, uh, Mr. Delco, we certainly appreciate your time. Um, it, I'm reminded like a, a story back a couple of years ago, and I'm not trying to get political. I just want to use the example. Uh, Senator Clinton, Senator Hillary Clinton said to uh, the um, the West Virginia coal miners and the coal mining industry, say, say, hey, y'all going to lose your job because technology is going to replace you. She said that. Mm -hmm. I mean, she said that a lot of people were pistol hot with her. The the, the um that that uh they they was fighting, but, um, you know, very angry with her because she told the truth. But it was, a dumb, it was a dumb thing to say. It was a dumb thing for a politician to say. As a politician, you should never really tell the truth. Not right now. You gotta you gotta tell the people what they want to hear if you want to get elected. Right? But it's so, true. Yeah. And it, it, it was true. So in, in lieu of that, I mean, what's the what's the line with us? I tell people, hey, you know, you, uh, your house is burning down. You know, the fiat currency inflation and inflation is killing the purchase of power, your money. Taxation is killing the uh, uh, taxation is killing your wealth streams. If you don't if, if you don't create residual income, money that works for you while you sleep, you're going to work until you die. If you're waiting, uh, if you're waiting to go in traditional business models uh, that are primarily um, uh, physical centric as opposed to internet centric, where you have no no location for uh, restraints or no no hours, and you're able to uh, you're able to uh, acquire and appreciate an asset, tier one asset like gold. You're able to build residual income. If you don't you don't take advantage of that, you're just you're you're just one health scare, or one divorce, or one or one uh, a one someone saying, "Hey, we just sold a company, and and without your income, and just destitute." I mean, and um, is that wrong, or should I say, or should I come on and say, no, "Y'all all right? If you just want to do this, you know, it'd be cool." If um, you know, I, I, know, I, I, I don't, I'm not wired like that, man. Hey, your house is burning down, cat. If you don't do anything, this is what's going to happen. You going off that cliff? I do, I do believe in telling the truth, is Gerald, and, and that's a that's another great conversation. That dynamics, we could probably do a whole other webcast on that conversation. Look, all right, so as being in network marketing for the last 20, 25 some years, they teach you things like to, to Jill's point, they teach you overcoming objections. Like if somebody says, Well, I'm skeptical, they teach you how to overcome that. So I should probably give this away, but I don't feel like I don't feel like I, I just want to be transparent. So when you say, Well, I'm skeptical. Well, we've been trained to say, I know exactly how you feel. I was skeptical too. Then I found out and whatever, and we go and process them through that because they do need help with that with that objection. They're saying they're skeptical. What they're really saying is, I'm afraid. I'm afraid to try something new. This is a territory I've never experienced. I might lose money. I might waste my time. I might be disappointed. So our job is to walk you through all of your fears, your trepidations, your skepticisms, your averseness, our job is to walk you through those things to to coach you to success. Because truly, it is a, a little bit harrowing to step out in every marketing. When I, when I went full-time in this business, it was November, November of 2013 when I got started in Carrot Bars. And I got my business package and I started working the business. And by March the 3rd of the very next year, 103 days later, I was earning enough where I no longer needed to go back to Wells Fargo. I was a mortgage banker. So I stopped working at Wells Fargo and I started doing care bars full time. And I had a conversation with my wife and I said, babe, this is incredible. Um, I got to do this. We got to go full time with this. I said, if I'm making as much money with this new little business working from home as I make for Wells Fargo, driving around the three different branches that I'm managing. If I drop Wells Fargo, I can put all of my time in this and we can really crush it. And sure enough, guys, it was it made me nervous. You know, the good part was my wife is amazing and she has a, had a great job and she had the family's health care. So I had that safety net there. And but I struck out to go full time. So I wasn't ever worried that I would not make money because I knew my wife had my back. But then when I took her off of her job and we went full-time together, 
that's when it got really, we got nervous because no health care, no benefits, nothing, right? And all you've got is your business. And that can be kind of nerve wracking. But guys, man, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it when you wake up at 6.30 in the morning and your wife's still asleep and you go get on your treadmill for an hour and you come back, take a shower and go back to bed. And she's still <laughs> And then she wakes up at 8.15 and you've dozed off and she wakes you up and says, do you want breakfast? And you say, yes, babe, please, that'd be great. And she goes downstairs and you're trying to sleep, but you're smelling food in your nose, man. Why are you trying to sleep? And then the sun is peering through the window and touches your skin and you're an electric being. So you sort of start waking up and you go in and compare yourself and you go downstairs in your pajamas. And she's got breakfast and you sit there and drink your, eat your breakfast and drink your coffee and juice. And you walk out on the back deck and just stand there and look for a good 25, 30, 40 minutes with nothing to do. And your spouse, your loved one is right there. Man, it, would, it wouldn't it would matter how much you earn to get to that level of, of freedom where there's nothing to do. Well, middle of the day today, my wife made this awesome lunch for me, and we sat, We were downstairs eating, and she said, let's put this on the tray. Can you go upstairs and sit in the bed and watch the movie? On the See, I didn't talk about the money right now. It's not about the money. It's about my freedom. And this is a freedom plan. This is a freedom plan. Um, I, I want to read something in the chat room. Uh Golly said, I'm setting up a hot dog restaurant in County Orange County, and that is great. So, and that's a great start. So consider setting up another one in another county, and another one in another county. Keep building it. There's a restaurant here in Atlanta, uh, Ugali. Uh, it's called This Is It. This is it. This is it. Yeah, this is it. Mm -hmm. This is it. Mm -hmm. it, started out, it started out with a trailer behind a pickup truck yeah. cooking barbecue. Right. Trailer with a grill, a yeah. traveling grill, and they would stop and put up a sign and sell their barbecue. And they finally got a little hole in the wall shop. Right. And they started selling their barbecue. Right. And they they were, go ahead, Dinah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're actually one of my customers. So they said, like, they're from, um, I think, up north, up north of the Midwest, but they came to Georgia. You know, they're based in Fayetteville, Georgia now. And like you said, started with a trailer, then a hole in the wall, and then they have locations in Decatur. Fayetteville, they got a location off of, uh, that's not Highway 85, Highway 85, location there. Uh, they they got two they locations in Fayetteville. They got one on Camp Creek. Camp Creek, yeah, Camp Creek. They're, they're growing. Maro and Maro on Mount Zion. Uh, Mount Zion, yeah. yeah. And, so, and they got really good food, and it's expensive, and people go. Like, it's, it's classy, home-cooked soul food, right? But what they did was they started doing their thing just like uh, Ogali. And then they expanded it to one little spot. And what they've got, they got multiple streams of income. One of their stores closed. Didn't matter because they had multiple streams. Right. Once you find a model that works, that's why I said, you don't have to do carrot bars. Do something where you can duplicate yourself. That's the key to wealth, one of them. The other one is delay, delay uh, gratification and put some of your cash into these appreciating assets or growth things that grow. I, I was messing around, guys, on Cash App with Tesla stock. And Dynast, it was like $700. And I got, you can get increments of stock. So I was getting little small increments, like $70 worth of Tesla stock. And I was selling it, buying and selling it. And now it's almost two grand. I was like, what is that? I didn't study it. I didn't study the stock. So I could have grew that $70. I could have just left it there. They think in Tesla stock is going to hit seventy thousand dollars a share. I'm not saying get it. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just saying start educating yourself on these things that make money for you without your own effort. Mm. Mr. Delco, what about the um, what about the mentality? I need money now. Uh, you know, I hear you growing. I, I, I hear about growth funds. I hear I know about assets. I know about, you know, it sounds good that you're at your acquiring goal. But you know what? I, I, I got the wolves on me now, man. I, I need to make money. I need a business that pays me right now. I can't wait five years for the traditional business to make a profit like 
like it says, I need to get things going now. Um, will will this help? Will this be a solution? With, with yes. yes, I think that it will. Uh, so a couple of, couple of things you can do. One is let's talk about the business second. But first, I don't have a problem with people getting a job if you know what your job is for. I don't have a problem with people having a job if you understand what your job is for. I'm a, I'm personally, my own opinion, I'm against a job as a resource to fund your life for the rest of your life. That just, that's an industrial age idea. It no longer serves. There are no pensions. They, they beguile the pension holders into trading it for a 401k and a 401k is not a secure retirement account. It is a stock portfolio that can go to zero if the stock collapses. So I'm not for that. But if you understand what your job is for, it will relieve that immediate need of income. And then you can be judicious in how you delay gratification and take some of that extra cash and make some smart investments and build your home-based business so that you can transition out of a job and full-time into your home-based business. Now, if it is a really good home-based business, it will also have a direct commission component with it, meaning Fitzgerald Stevens, I sponsored him into our business, Carrot Bars. When I sponsored him, so he's a VIP now, I earned a 10% commission on the package he chose. That's direct sales, just like a car salesperson. You sell a car and you get a commission, whatever that commission split is at a car sale, car dealership, they maybe make 6%. Maybe some of the senior associates, based on volume, make 10 15%. But if they sell a $50,000 car and make 10%, they make $5,000, boom. Just like a realtor, they sell a million dollar house, they get 5%, they make $50,000, boom. That's commissions. So a good, uh, a good network marketing company will have a direct commission component. Ours does have that. So it can alleviate that immediate need for income. As a matter of fact, when I got started in our company, I started making money the very next week. I instantly got paid, and I have not met the check since I started. Now, how do I do that? I won't go to bed until I make sure I'm getting paid. That's it. You take your list, and you call and call and call until you get that check. And if you're really aggressive, after that one, you call some more until you get a second one. You set your own metrics. It's up to you. You choose how much you want to earn, and you let your work ethic equal your desire. So I don't have a problem with people who need money right now. You do need money right now. But you'd be shocked at how much money you don't really need, which sends me back to my original conversation that says use your credit card and track your expenses. You'd be shocked at how much money you don't need. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> they got one more time. My affiliate, affiliate links in the chat room. Click on the affiliate link. Sign up as an affiliate. And I will personally call you. Also, is scrolling at the bottom. The ticker at the bottom of the screen will also be in the description as well. Uh, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm here to, to learn, uh, Mr. Dalco. So, you know. So yeah. that, uh, to me, I don't think I don't think uh, I don't think the. Uh, uh, our audience, when you and I come on, have ever heard us this quiet before. <laughs> well, I appreciate the deference. I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this last thing, and then I'll run, okay? Because I do have another call. I'm actually late. It's supposed to be at seven, and it's seven twelve. But I'm honored to be here with you. Let me say this last piece, okay? So back to the original conversation. How much longer until the U.S. economy is back to normal? The U.S. economy, not yours. We got all off. I got all off on a tangent making the U.S. economy separate from your economy. I don't want you, I want to do all I can, back to Jill's point, I'm not really advocating the business as, as much as I'm advocating, get out of the U.S. economy. Don't let that be your confinement or your elevation. Get away from it. Be free from that. You can be free from the U.S. economy. Define and design your own economy. But let's talk about the U.S. economy for just a split second. How long until the U.S. economy is back to normal? Guys, y'all already said in the chat room, this might be the new normal. I mean, right. the infectious disease control people are saying that COVID could be with us for another two years. Now, thankfully, we're starting to see some curves starting to start to flatten, which is so weird. Don't get mad at me. Don't throw any stones. But now here in Georgia, 
You can't go in some stores without a mask. I know people say you suck in your own carbon dioxide. Well, don't go to the store then <laughs> because we are seeing a slowing of the curve because people are being forced to wear the mask they don't want to wear. I was watching this uh, car, this commercial, and this guy, he had on a hazmat suit. Anybody know what a hazmat suit is? Yeah. Like you got on his head, wear and goggles and a respirator, and you're covered head to toe. Why are they wearing that? Why are they wearing that? See, this is when I talk about the conspiracies. I just get annoyed because everything doesn't have to be a conspiracy. You believe in hazmat suits, right? If, if you work somewhere and they say, hey, put this suit on because there's infectious disease in this space where we're uh, checking on, you know, people say they made the virus in the, in the lab. Okay, let's assume they made the virus in the lab. Guess what the people in the lab have on? Hazmat suits. Man, come in. Stop arguing about stupid stuff. Okay, so there's a virus out here. So when people are in infectious areas, they put on hazmat suits. Why do they do that? Because they don't want to catch whatever it is that they're trying to protect themselves from. I don't care who's trying to control me. I'm trying to live. I got five beautiful grandkids. So if it's a hoax or if it's real, I don't want it. <laughs> right? And people are putting masks on and it's slowing the spread. Or at least they're telling us it is. Right? You got to believe somebody. You got to believe somebody. Right? So the U.S. economy, it might be in shambles for one to two more years. Wow. What are you going to do about it? You going to wait it out? <laughs> All right. What are you going to do about it? People have lost their jobs that never thought they would lose their jobs. 40 million unemployed people in America or underemployed. What are you going to do about it? Do something different. And Estimir has an excellent plan if you're interested. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, 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 for sure. Anything you want to add? I'd just like to thank, uh, I'd just like to thank um, uh, Mr. Delco. I, I, you know, I, I literally sent him, I gave him about probably like an hour notice. No, I didn't. That was the first one. I gave him, the, I gave him like, like a five minute notice and, and I want to be, and, and he made time available for me with, with a, a global organization, um, close to a hundred thousand uh, business partners. That's not exaggeration, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, you, you guys often heard me say, I'm just a small fraction of his team. My little bitty number is really just a small fraction, small fraction. But I also made the comment like this. You never know who you're talking to. You never know what, you know, how hungry someone is until you give them the opportunity. And um, and, and so um, friends since 1998, literally, you know, the band I told you we was in the ministry together. That's him. You know, the. The uh, the lady I told you, Miss Sherry Brown, that's the three of us and knowing each other that long. But I will tell you this. When someone brings you someone like this, don't get so familiar because you're judging uh, uh, an incredible opportunity based on who's presenting it to you. Had I would have took that advice, had I would just said, I just just Michael, um, that, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't be on the road that I am because at the end of the day, I wanted to be free. I simply wanted to pre. I, I had to. At 50 years old, I'm like, man, I can't keep doing this. That's with my little college education, my University of Alabama degree. We got a great football team, but last time I checked, they don't send me a royalty for it. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, we oh, uh, great, great football team, great. Yeah, yeah. Crimson Alabama Crimson Tigers. Uh, you know, uh, but my point, my point of the matter is, you know, before you make up your mind where you think you don't know, sit down and take a good look at it. And I would like to evaluate that uh, currently. Okay, you already have the A on the table. What you're doing right now is it getting you where you want to go? Is it getting you where you want to go? Is it getting you where you want to go in your time frame? Uh, when that, when you guys hear me talk about jobs, I don't detest jobs. I'm 55 years old. I don't got time to really sit out there and work 15 years. I'm 70 years old. Me and Michael out there, you know, you know, man, we can't do that. And so, but how do you make up that time that that you didn't? sees that how do you make up that time value of money people to 401ks uh i've i've talked to, i've heard people man i've lost 80 thousand 30 thousand I, I need to get it out of getting into a thing because i can't make up that time value of money so maybe it, uh maybe with just something um th there's something that you should take a look at that maybe can fit well in your financial portfolio long term 
the three of us did. And, and this is uh, this is strictly a referral business. You see, uh, when when Michael um, when Michael called me and said, hey, Fitzgerald, I got a business for you to join, deal to go. Sign me up. I can't, I called Dinah. Say, Dinah, listen, I got something here right now. You need to go ahead and get this money to be made. Sign me up. Well, that's not the way we're taught. We're, we're all familiar with each other. But, mm -hmm. but thank God we did say that. So we're come on, we, we come on. We're uh, we're we're talking about helping you build wealth and in in the close, you know, in my close, and I'll let I'll let um, Prince Amir have the last word on the show. Warren Buffett has said that if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. The same Warren Buffett who less than two weeks ago divested from Goldman Sachs that, that you know that was extraordinary uh, value. We picked that up at a fire sale in 2008 debacle. Goldman Sachs pleaded when him wanted to get those shares back. He said, "No, I'm cool with this." He mm -hmm. divested from J.P. Morgan. He took he took that money and bought 23.7 million shares of Barrick Gold based out of Toronto, Canada. A, a mm -hmm. man, he said that you know he didn't really think this was on, but he changed his mind. Mr. Mr. Warren Buffett said that a billionaire considered one of the best investors in the world. Follow what the wealthy do. So he has said that you don't figure out a way to make money while you sleep. You work until you die. Mr. Michael Delco says, if you don't come from a wealthy family, a wealthy family needs to come from you. That's the man I quote that from. Prince Dada Samir says, titles are not sexy. Income is. And Fitzgerald <laughs> Stevens says, if you don't make moves, moves will be made upon you mm. Choose whatever you want to choose but you know not to make a choice is a choice but you know just take a strong look at something that could possibly put you in a uh, in a level that you really really want to be uh mr delco thank you so much for your time thank you so much for the short notice prince Diana samir this is your stream and i'll let you know you have final words hey, everyone thank you so much for joining it's hard to follow up to uh, extraordinary uh, individuals like Fitzgerald Stevens and Mr. Uh, Michael Dalco, Mr. Fitzgerald Stevens. So, you know, we'll go ahead and close out everyone. My affiliate links in the chat room, click on the affiliate link, sign up as an affiliate and I will call you. We will get you guys plugged in and up and running and ready to rock and roll. Uh, thank you so much for joining until next time, which will be tomorrow for me and Fitzgerald. Peace, everybody. Thank you. Bye -bye.